Hi. Hi. Have you ever wondered how and when the universe started? The Big Bang Theory answers this question. To understand this theory, we will first have to know what is the Big Bang, and then understand why we believe in it. After that, we will study the eras of our universe, and finally, give some alternative theories. So, let's get started. Discoveries like Einstein's laws of gravity and Hubble's laws have shown beyond reasonable doubts that our universe did in fact have a beginning. Everything started from an infinitely hot and dense point from which all the matter in our universe erupted, a point in space and time in which all the laws of physics we know break down. This point is called the initial singularity. Before getting into details, I wanted to correct something. The Big Bang isn't an explosion, as you might think. It was all space, stretching everywhere at once. The universe didn't expand into anything. Space was just expanding into itself. Let us now talk about observational evidence of the Big Bang. First of all, there is the Hubble's laws and the expansion of space, an observation in which Hubble deduced that the distance between galaxies increases and proposed the equation v equals d multiplied by h0, where v is the recessional velocity, d the proper distance from the observer to the galaxy, and h0 the Hubble's constant. Also, there is the cosmic microwave background. This picture, which is a sort of a map, shows us the history of our universe since light has been produced. Also, the abundance of light elements, hydrogen and helium, found in the observable universe are thought to support the Big Bang model of origins. Now, the eras of our universe. Let us not talk about the very first step, which is the Big Bang, and go directly to the Planck era. Note that these immediate fraction of a second following the Big Bang, known as the Planck era, are not well understood by scientists. From the moment of the initial expansion to 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds afterwards, cosmologists think that the four fundamental forces we know in our universe today were combined into one single unified force. This era was followed by the grand unification era that lasted from 10 to the power of minus 43 seconds to 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds. This era is characterized by the gravity's separation from the three other forces, and also the separation of the strong force from the electroweak force. Then comes the electroweak era that lasted from 10 to the power of minus 35 seconds and 10 to the power of minus 10 seconds after the Big Bang. As a result of the separation of the strong force from the electroweak force, a tremendous amount of energy was released, causing a very rapid expansion known as inflation. As the universe expanded more rapidly than the speed of flight, extremely energetic interactions created elementary particles such as photons, gluons, or quarks. This era ended with the separation of electromagnetism from the weak force. Between 10 to the power of minus 10 seconds and 0.001 seconds, or during the elementary particle era, a soup of particles filled the universe. At first, it was was too hot for protons and neutrons to survive. Instead, there was a dense sea of quarks and antiquarks, the needed particles and antiparticles to form neutrons and protons. Let me explain it to them. Okay, I will let you do it. Well, matter and antimatter behave exactly the same. The only difference is that the antimatter and matter have opposite charges. And if they collide, they annihilate so the mass of both of them is converted to energy that is emerged as gamma rays. In that time, there was a nearly equal amount of quarks and antiquarks, or matter and antimatter. But take a moment and look around you. There is no antimatter. So. Where did it all go? Scientists think that a slight asymmetry between the amounts of matter and antimatter enabled matter to dominate and become the universe's primary ingredient. Now, the universe that is containing a lot of gamma rays and quarks cooled down and expanded, thing that enabled the strong nuclear force to draw quarks together, forming protons and neutrons. Now, the era of nucleosynthesis. It took place from 0.001 seconds to 3 minutes after the Big Bang. During this era, neutrons and protons have combined into the first atomic nuclei, hydrogen, some of which fused further into lithium and helium. 
The era of nuclei occurs from minutes 3 to 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Note that during all the previous eras, the universe was opaque to light and all atoms were free of electrons. I mean, they were ionized. Hence, the photons heated the matter to the same temperature they were at. Then a change took place and the matter no longer absorbed the photons efficiently. Photons no longer heated the matter, causing it to cool down and clump together. After that, the era of atoms took place between 380,000 years and 1 billion years or so after the Big Bang. During this era, the universe finally cooled and expanded enough for the nuclei to capture free electrons to form neutral atoms. The photons were finally able to move through space and the universe became transparent for the very first time. These photons have been passing through the universe ever since, forming the cosmic microwave background that we have talked about previously. And finally, we get to the galaxy's era, the era in which you, he, and I live. During this era, galaxies, clusters, and stars have been formed. And with the current of time, a little dot in space was formed. We call it Earth. Wait a minute, since the beginning of our video, we were talking about the Big Bang Theory as the only possible theory that explains the origins of our universe. But what if I tell you that the Big Bang Theory isn't the only idea? One idea is that before the universe began, there were multidimensional strings floating in higher dimensional space. Two of them collided and created our universe. Another idea is that our universe is cyclic. It expands, contracts, and begins again. This is what we call the Big Bounce. A third idea uses super strong theory, and it says that there are many universes that have lasted for a long time, or maybe forever. One of these universes is ours. This is what we call the multiverse. Even though the human race develops its science and technology, we can't say with a certain certainty this is how the universe began and hurries its steps. I believe that nature still has too much to tell us, and scientists will never give up until they get the full answers.